would be, the sound of that would be like this. Bring it up. That's what it sounds like when we're looking at Matthew chapter 2. Yeah, I hear it now. Good, all right. Matthew chapter number 2. We're going to look at the Word now. The Word's what changes lives. Uh, if you need a Bible, just slip your hand up. Make sure that you get one. Matthew chapter number 2. Where we are going to begin reading. Let's all stand if you do not mind. Please stand in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Matthew chapter number 2. I guess I should get there. Matthew chapter number 2. I'm going to read uh, quite a bit of it. and uh, It's a good story. It's not only a story, it's the truth, baby. Amen. Something Amen. happened. And I thank God for that. And so, Matthew chapter number 2. Verse number 1, the Bible says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of all the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not thou least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had, had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when, we have, when he have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they had saw the star, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw a young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened up their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and Flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night, and they departed into Egypt. And what and, and was there it was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled the words which were spoken by the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. And sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and in the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently acquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Rama there was a voice heard, lamentations and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. But Herod was dead. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in the dream of Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard of that Archelaus did reign in Judah, Judea, in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into parts of Galilee, and he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. I want to preach on this mess, this title tonight, today, I want to be a wise man, I want to be a wise man, let's pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And God, we do thank you for this time to open up the bread of life, the word of God, the, the infallible, inerrant, preserved, inspired, almighty word of God, Lord, that we can preach it and teach it and learn from it today, and that the Holy Spirit of God would go into these pews, into people's minds and hearts today, and, and work upon us, and 
Help us to grow closer to you. Father, I pray that that would happen today. I pray the Holy Spirit of God would lead us and guide us. And Lord, I ask you today, if there's anyone in here that, that might not know you as their Savior, Lord, we pray that their hearts would be open to you and that they might be saved today. Father, please bless the preaching and teaching of your word. Thank you for the assembling of ourselves together. Please help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing so long.
churches love Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. I like it a lot. We uh, we got the speaker, the new speakers out there. We, we, we blow them often, uh, and uh, we got the new ones out there. And uh, you're around here uh, the whole month of Christmas. We have Christmas carols playing on that, and that just still seven years into it, I walk down the street and I think that is funny. I mean, just thinking about where I live and where we're at and the, the sin that's so prevalent on the streets. You see, where we live, the sin's out in the open. Where other people live, the sin's behind the closed doors. People don't know about all of it and stuff. But I think it's awesome that, that they're right there and they get to hear uh, about Jesus being born all day long. And Amen. up the road here and hear it. When we play the Bible, they get to hear that. And they're getting to hear my voice right now, praise God. They should be very happy about that. They get to hear about the Word of God. Just read a chapter of the Bible to them. I did that because in case you didn't read your Bible this morning, I just helped you, amen, read a whole chapter, and so we needed it, amen, and so this is a very familiar passage, very familiar uh, story in the Bible where uh, uh, where Jesus is born in and, and, and Bethlehem, and Bethlehem, Judea, and, and the wise men, they come seeking for Jesus, they're looking for him. Now, I understand we love to have the manger scene out here and the different things and, and the wise men over here and the baby here in the manger. But when the wise men found Jesus, he wasn't a baby in a manger. He was a young child. He was at least two years old. That's we right. know that. And so, but I still like the manger scene. I like to think about that. But I want you to understand what was going on. Uh, God had woke up these men somehow. And, and they, they, for somehow, the reason they had a desire to seek after Jesus. And, and God woke you up one day, and for some reason you had a desire to seek after Jesus. And, and so they come looking for Jesus, they get to Herod, and Herod hears about it, and he starts acting like he's for it, but he's not. And he wants to kill the baby. He doesn't, doesn't want the, the king to come. And, and many of the people in Jerusalem were troubled at that. They didn't like hearing that. And these wise men went, and they followed the star, and, 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 and maybe up to two years they followed the star. We, at least two. They followed the star. When they found that baby, he was in a home. He was a little boy. And, and they brought him gifts and, and different things. And the Bible says they left a different way. They were worried about Herod, so they didn't go back and tell Herod they found the baby. They knew what was right when they met Jesus. They understood that there were some things that they believed before were not true. And after they met the King of Kings, now they looked at life a little bit differently. Amen. Can I tell you that that's the way it is with Christianity today? When you truly meet the Lord, you'll look at it a little bit differently after that. Things will make a little more sense and you'll leave a different way. I walked into the church house November 17th. 2002, uh, unsaved on my way to hell, didn't know anything about God, never heard, can, can't remember ever even hearing a verse being quoted or, or talked to about it, and I walked in unsaved, and I got born again and walked out a different way. Amen. Amen. And that's a good thing, and that's a whole different message we can preach on. When you meet Jesus, you'll leave a different way. And that's what was happening here. And so when they came back, uh, Herod was mad. He did not like it. And Herod kills every baby in Jerusalem uh, two years and younger. Kills them all. But it was prophesied. We see it here about Rachel weeping for her children. That was prophesied that, that uh, Rachel, we go back to Isaac and Rachel, or, uh, and, and then we go back to the, 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 the mother and the father of the patriarchs. Uh, 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 of, of, of the 12 patriarchs and we, they, it was prophesied that their children would be killed and two years and younger all got killed. That's why Joseph took the baby and went to Egypt. And then after Herod died, God said, hey, Joseph, you can go back now. And Joseph goes back and instead of going to Bethlehem where he thought they might look for him, he goes to Galilee and then he goes over to Nazarene, Nazareth and that the Bible says that Jesus would be a Nazarene. Uh, and, and so a lot of people, when Jesus came upon this earth and, and walked and was older, was telling people he was the Christ, they said, well, nothing good ever came out of Galilee. And in Nazareth, God wasn't supposed to be a Nazarite, or, Naz or wasn't, wasn't, wasn't coming from Galilee. He's coming from Bethlehem, and they didn't understand that Jesus was born there the whole time. It was just a little bit different of a story. What I want to concentrate on today is I want to be one of those wise men. Yeah. I want to be somebody that... That, that gets after the Lord. 
chases after him, wants to be with him, wants to find him, wants to meet him, wants to have him in my life. And, and listen to me. It's amazing. If, I'm talking to the people in here that are born again who sold out for Jesus. It's amazing that we're one of them now. Amen. That, that really loves the Lord. And, and a group this size, maybe you're sitting here today and you just don't understand it all. That's okay. Everybody starts somewhere. But I tell you this, you give your heart to the Lord, you'll leave a different way. Right. And these wise men uh, were after him. And Christmas time <clears throat> is, is one of the greatest times of the year for me. I love it. I, I think it's a wonderful time. And, and the birth of Jesus Christ changed the history of the world. Right. Uh, I tell people often who believe in these false religions, and I say, man, they, they started time over for him. Uh, he, he, he rocked the world. He, he changed the world. And everybody has uh, just about, and I know there's places where they've never heard of Jesus, but that's up to us to get it there. Amen. But the Bible says that Paul and these apostles got it all around the world. And, and we're telling everybody about the Lord. And, and so no other birth receives the attention that Jesus' birth receives. We don't celebrate the birthdays of any of those false prophets. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't ever hear of it. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't change the whole climate of the United States like Jesus' birth does. Uh, uh, and listen to me, most folks, most activity going on right now is not about Jesus' birth. That's right. It's about money. It's about things. It's about greed. It's about gimme, gimme, gimme. Now, I realize there are some folks that enjoy giving. I like giving, and I know there's some lost people that like giving. But the thing we need to concentrate on today was it was his birth. And he ought to get glory and honor in his birth. I'm not real big on my birthday. Uh, I'll be uh, 29 years old this year, and I'm just, you know, I'm getting older, and uh, I'm not really excited about that. But uh, anyway, uh, Lord, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'll be 45, and and, 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 and and I like that because I like to carry at 45. No, I'm kidding. I like it. <laughs> I know what I'm doing at 46. I'm going to make a new gun. But uh, anyways, I'm not that excited about my birthday, but I'll be honest with you. If my wife didn't say happy birthday to me on my birthday, I'd be hurt. I'm not thinking, oh, everybody just missed it. My kids. Uh, you know, and and, and, I, and that's really who, who I really want to say happy birthday to me. Uh, you know, I do like coconut cream pies and stuff like that <laughs> on my birthday too. But anyways, it would hurt me. And it would hurt you if nobody said it. I mean, can you, you know, can you imagine being all alone? Maybe you are, and I hate that for you. And I love you. And if you'll tell you, if you are all alone, and I love to be your friend. And I love to, to wish you a happy birthday and different things like that. We want to do that. But, you know, Jesus' birthday is going to come. And kids are going to race down those stairs and parents and, and things are going to happen and they're not going to give God glory. Why? Because they're not seeking Jesus. And they're not looking for Jesus. And Christians know that we're celebrating a baby born in a manger uh, that came and died for the world and gave his life for the world and the world doesn't know anything about that saving power of Jesus. And, uh, the world's Christmas is a time for buying and, and, and selling and getting gain. And, and listen, there's a good lesson in this Bible here today for us. And I want God to give it to us. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. Number one, I want you to see this in verse number one. The seeking of the wise men. They were seeking. They were wise men that were seeking Jesus. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Their description of these men, they are called wise men. I mean, that's that's pretty, pretty unbelievable as we think about this today. Uh, I want you to understand this verse, Jeremiah 29, 13. You don't have to turn there, but listen to me. It says, and seek... I'm sorry, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. God says, if you'll seek me with all your heart, you will find me. You understand we have people uh, that never get into a relationship with the Lord and don't understand why I'm a psycho for Jesus and why I believe he's powerful and why I believe I have a relationship. And they don't understand it. It's because they're not seeking him. 
Because this is a promise in the Bible for us. If we'll seek him with all our heart, you'll find us. And, and these wise men were, were seeking for Jesus. I want to ask you this. If you're seeking Jesus, you'll be a wise person. Let me ask you this. Are you a wise person? I want to be a wise man. And wisdom comes from one source. Wisdom is seeing the world like God sees the world. Wisdom is not intellect. Wisdom is not knowledge. It's not books. It's not that. It's seeing the world like God sees it. And James 1.5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. God says if we want wisdom, we ask him for it. And these wise men, in their description, God says they were wise, and they were seeking for God. And I'm just telling you, the church needs a revival of seeking for God. Amen. That's what we need in our families. That's what we need in our church. That's what this country needs, is a God-seeking revival. Amen. Amen. It's what God wants. So if you'll search for me, if you'll seek me and find, you'll find me. I'll be there for you. Man may, may possess intelligence and but listen, intelligence without wisdom from God is useless. That's right. There are some people that are so stinking book smart, but are useless. And maybe you know some. The Bible has much to say about a wise man. And he also has much to say about a foolish man. That's the opposite of wise. Proverbs 1.5, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning. Listen to that. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. I want to be a wise man, Brother Paul. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. A person that hears and increases in learning and understands what God wants him to will, will go to wise people for counsel. You know, a lot of people you know they go to for counsel, the ones they know that are going to agree with them. I mean, I want to go to the ones that are going to tell me the truth. The Bible says, uh, faithful are the wounds of a friend. That means, you know, if you're a real friend, you'll tell them the truth. Even if it's going to hurt them a little bit. you got to help them. Proverbs 12, 15 says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. I mean, a fool is like, man, I'm right. But, he that hearkeneth unto counsel shall be wise. Godly counsel. Proverbs 12, 18. There is he that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of a wise is health. Man, there's some folks that just tear you up with their tongue. But the tongue of a wise person will help you, will be healthy to you. I want to be a wise man. These guys, God labeled them wise. <coughs> not because they, they look like the pictures we've seen. Because they knew something. Something was different about them. And they went seeking after God. Proverbs 13, 14. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. The laws of the wise is a fountain of life. Now thank God. Uh, the, the Lord doesn't leave us hanging. And we, can, we can see this Bible, Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be what, sincere? He that walketh with wise men shall be? Sincere preached a message about four years ago up here on that verse. That was his verse, man. He tore everybody up, thank God. Hey, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. He that walketh with a fool shall be a fool. I mean, it's, it's really that simple. <coughs> But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. That's what it says. Hey, their description was they were wise. And we ought to want to be wise. Wisdom, seeing the world like God sees it. Understanding the world like God understands it. Not understanding the world any other way, but the way God would have us to understand it. We see their description. We see the star was their guide. I'm going to come back to that star in just a second. And we see how eager or earnest they were. To go after God, seeking after it. They came from the east. They came a long way. And folks, it wasn't in an air-conditioned car. They weren't coming from someplace in a lot of luxury. They came through the sand, or probably with camels and different ways of travel. And when they were walking and seeking after something from God. And that's the way God is, man. That's where we ought to be, seeking for God. 
They'd have crossed the desert and through, went through Saudi Arabia. And, man, it would have been hot and nasty. The Bible says from afar off. They came from afar off. Now, Chris, let me read you this verse out of Ephesians 2.13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes... Who, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Hey, that's a blessing right there. Hey, hey, uh, the blood-bought Christian person that knows Christ for real, hey, you were afar off, but now you've been made close to God by the blood of Jesus. Amen. See, they were afar off, and they went seeking. They, 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 they came a long way. They were earnest, looking for God. It must have been difficult. Two years of traveling, following a star, think about it now. So, you know, they followed that star the whole time. That's what the Bible says. You say, you believe that? That's exactly what I believe. Amen. Amen. And that's why I'm blessed. Amen. Because I believe, I believe every single part of this book. Amen. Can you do it for the burden? No, I fall often. But I get back up and say, Lord, I want to do it right. God, I want to have your life. I want to be what you want me to be. I want to be a wise man. Think of all the difficulty they encountered, man. They were earnestly seeking the Messiah. And folks, we, in our churches today, we can't get folks to come back on a Sunday night. We can't get folks to come on a Thursday or to go visiting on a Saturday. And these guys were wise. Why? Because of their description. Because they were seeking after the Lord. And, and I thank God for the Liberty Baptist Church. We've got folks that are sold out to Jesus, and it's a blessing. But today on Sunday morning, I'm talking to a lot of folks that just ain't, ain't, ain't got there yet. Hey, what about you? Do you want to hear from the Lord? Do you want to be a wise person and get there? And I understand health reasons that prevent folks, and that's great, and I understand that. And we do live streams for that kind of stuff. But I want to be under the spout where the glory comes out. Amen. I want my life to be changed because God did something for me. I want the Holy Ghost of God to move into my life. The real Holy Ghost. Not the, not the fake deal that makes us run around act silly. I want God to move into my life and change my life. And, and I want to seek after Him. And, and man, it came from afar off. It was difficult. You said, well, Brother Bert, you know, uh, we had a lady the other, the other day, or yesterday, man, we were telling the, 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 the kids that we weren't going to run the bus, drive the bus today. But we said, but your mama can bring your kid, bring bring you in. And he asked his mama, she said, well, Saturday and Sunday is my only day off, so no, we won't be gone. And I thought, man, that's, that's too bad. I yeah, said, we'll just keep picking him up. Man, maybe we need to start going and grabbing him ourselves Sunday morning. Uh, because he wants to be and he wants to seek him, but he doesn't have a wise mama. And, and not because she's, something's wrong with her, she just doesn't know the Lord, obviously. And they need to know the Lord. And people that don't know the Lord will act like people that don't know the Lord. So I'm not condemning them. God condemns them. But what I'm saying is this. you got to seek them, even if it's far off. Things happen in my house the worst on Sundays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. that's, when the, that's when it breaks loose often. Sunday morning and Thursday, it breaks loose. Why is that? Because the devil hates us. Hates me and knows where I'm going on those days. My kids don't have to come to me and say, Daddy, are we going? No, no. We, we already know where we're headed. We're going there. And they like it. There's been some times they say, I don't want to go to church. And I said, well, when you get older, uh, you're still going or I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you, th you thought I was going to say, when you get older, you don't have to go. No, no. I'm going to get them. Amen. Hey, listen. Are you a wise person? Are you coming from afar off? And we got folks that live. I mean, Henry lives. What, what block do you live on, Bustleton, Brother Henry? 12,000 Bustleton. Nobody's come that far again. And, and he's faithful to come. And he's 71 years old and, and faithful to be here. And, 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 and it comes the furthest. Man, that's a blessing. Hey, man, we ought to be seeking the Lord. Wise men seek him. And, and they want to get after him. Uh, they were wise and they were seeking. Number two, they were wise and they were inquiring. What do you mean by inquire, Brother Bert? They, they were investigating. Verse number two, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. The first question posted in the New Testament, where is he? Isn't that something? I mean, that's unbelievable. Where is he? 
The first question God ever asked in the Bible, uh, in Genesis 3, where art thou? Talking to Adam and Eve. See, Adam and Eve were hiding from God because they they'd done the transgression. They'd taken forbidden fruit. And they, they were without God hiding from him. Hey, if you're without God, you will not know where is he either. You won't be able to find him if you don't know if you're hiding from God. And, and it's, it's interesting that God put that in the Bible like that. Let me ask you this. Is Christ in you today? It's a good Christmas present. You know what would be the best Christmas present ever? Is either if you're not saved, to give your life to God because He paid for you and died for you. Or if you are saved, to renew your allegiance to Him. And, and I'm not going to preach on it this year, but years ago God gave me a thought in, in Romans 12, uh, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a, a, a sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He said, I beseech you, I thank you, brethren, by the mercies of God, because how good and merciful God was that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present and the word present are spelled the same way. And so, wouldn't it have been interesting if he said, hey, I, I, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice? We're going to give ourselves to the Lord for why? They were inquiring, man, where, what time was he born? Where, where was he at? Like, what, what's going on? And I come to church and I want to hear from God. And we got folks in here that come in here and they can't wait for the preacher. I, I, I've, uh, I've had a couple of times, uh, maybe twice I think, on our fellowship Sunday where I said, we're not going to have the second service. We're just going to go and clean up and get out of here. It's been a great day. And, and I had a couple of ladies say, what? And I said, then now we're going to go ahead and go. And they're like, what? And I said, well, I'll never do it again. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, you know, that's a blessing. Because you know, most Baptists would be happy to hear that. And I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about in general around this world. Oh, and I have the second one. Woo, all right. Football time. <laughs> hey, listen. Diligently seeking the Lord. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Hey, a sacrifice, listen to me. A sacrifice hurts. Well, it's my only day off. Man, what a sad thing for that little boy. What a sad thing for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, why? <laughs> Glory brushed into her door that day yesterday, and God was there and trying to help her. And, and man, it changed her life. Daddy's, well, the only day I get my child is on Sunday. Well, sir, you better bring them to church and pray that God moves yeah. into their life and yeah. endure so you can be a real daddy. Hey, diligently seeking them, and they were inquiring of them. Is Christ in you? Colossians 1 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory, of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Okay, God wants to make known Christ. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God wants to be inside of folks. They were inquiring. <coughs> Listen, when God's inside of you, you know what you get? <coughs> you get peace. Yeah. Amen. You get a real peace. Uh, uh, you get a prosperity. And I'm not talking about uh, 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 financial, everything just great financially. But you get peace and prosperity from God Almighty. And it's a life-changing deal. I mean, it's a life changer. I had to start Amen. running folks up here, one after the other, and there'd be tears in every one of their eyes about how God has come into their life and gave them peace. Not how pastor has talked them into something and brainwashed them. But God moved in. For this holiday time, we almost said it. This, this Christmas time, we ought to be thinking about God and His birthday and, and, and knowing Him. Uh, me and Kara visited a lady recently that, 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 that is experiencing chaos in her life. I mean, her life is upside down. And, 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 and she says that she knows Christ, but it's in chaos because she's ignoring Him if she really does know Him. Christ's not reigning in her life. <coughs> Folks, you know who's got, who's got the worst in the room today? Christians who aren't living for the Lord. Yeah, amen. Listen, we've all got problems. Man, i got folks in here that got some real deal stuff going on, but you would never know it 
because they've got peace from God that He's going to help them and take care of them. That's what the peace is. And the result of, uh, uh, of the question in verse number 3, uh, that Herod the king had uh, heard these things, was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And he was troubled. What was he troubled about? The announcement of Jesus Christ, the peace and the joy that he would bring. Why was he troubled? Because of his sin. Because of his unbelief. Hey, you know who's troubled about Jesus? Think about it now. Unbelievers. That's right. What? Why does it hurt them so much that we come to this church and, and that we want to believe what we believe from the Bible? Why is that offensive to them where they want to shut us down? Why would that bother them? Because they're unbeliever and the, uh, the good tidings of Jesus offends them and makes people uneasy. Herod was uneasy because he didn't know God. And, and God would have saved Herod. God, God loves the world and wants to give his life for everybody. Amen. Man, I thank God that we've got them. I, I thank God when I'm in the store uh, shopping and different things, we're thinking about doing some shopping Tuesday. And, and I think, man, it's going to be awesome. Just to go around and, and say Merry Christmas to folks and, and have a bunch of tracks in my hands and, uh, and, and be able to tell somebody about the Lord and what, what really happened, what Christmas is really about. The reason for the season. <coughs> this is sin in other, anybody's life will bring unbelief and trouble. And the thought of Christ troubles the unsaved. Doesn't trouble me. And I like it. <laughs> they, they've rejected them. And that's why they were troubled, man. You see the inquiring of them. You see the seeking of them. And then look at this. Number three, we see the birth of where he was at. Look at verse four. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, At Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not thou least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall a governor shall come a governor and shall rule my people. Uh, that is a verse out of the Bible being quoted from the Old Testament. And the place of Bethlehem is where he'd be born. You know what Bethlehem means? It means the place of bread. It's where the bread is. And the Bible often refers to Jesus as the bread of life. And what he was, he was something that would fill us, something that would, would help us, something that would take the, the hunger pains of, of what we're... We, you know, I had a gap inside of me before I got saved. I had a void inside of me, and I was always looking for something to fill that void, and then the bread of life filled Amen. that void, Amen. and I've not been hungry since. Amen. I mean, think about it. I mean, it's just you never know it's physical. Folks, I tell people all the time, you don't understand it yet, but if you give your life to the Lord, you'll understand it. That's right. I mean, He'll come in and, and, and change your life. And, and, and man, He'll do something. Why? Because He's the bread from heaven. He's the one that came down to change our life. Amen. People don't want to hear that. <clears throat> Think about who He was. The Bible says, He shall rule my people. And God wanted them to rule. They, hey, no man rules you. God rules the church. God is over us. So, Brother Burton, you sure try to tell us a lot. I sure like to preach the Bible a lot. I sure like to give you advice from the Bible a lot. And sometimes I will give you my advice. And if you don't want my advice, that's okay. I'm not going to fault you for that. But most of the time, it's going to lead back to some biblical principle, I hope. Hey, listen. Jesus was born in the place of bread. I mean, that's what it was. And then he was God Almighty. Take your Bible and turn to Luke chapter number eight or chapter number two. Luke two, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Here in the rough one of the, of the pages, that's great. Luke two, verse number eight, Christmas story. Just another account of Jesus. Here it is. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not! For behold, I bring you good tidings and of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign of you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God 
and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth peace and good will toward men. You see, when Jesus was born, God Almighty was born. He wasn't just a man that would rule over his people. He was God in the flesh. He was Jesus the Christ, the Amen. Messiah. We our Sunday school. Let me invite you out to Sunday school, folks, because we're learning why that King James Bible is the only Bible. And That's we're right. learning it for proof. And so we're not just giving you our opinion. We're teaching you why it is what it is. And listen, God Almighty, they try to tell those little Bibles that some people got to take out his deity, take out Jesus, take out Christ, take out God, take all this stuff out to kind of dumb down the Word of God or water down the Word of God where it doesn't have any power. This book ain't no good we don't have God in it. That's right. A lot of them books take the blood out. The book ain't no good with the blood out of it. Amen. And, and, and God is God Almighty. And then let's finish up here with Harry, what he was. And you'll see that he wasn't a wise man. You see, they went to the place, of, they knew the place of bread was where God would be born. They were, they were inquiring of him. They were seeking him diligently. They wanted to be a part of, of who he was. Verse number 7, Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Now I want you to look at that, that wording. He took them to the side privately, and then he was diligent to get after them to see where he was at so he could kill them. You see, folks, everybody's diligent for something. Yeah. Everybody's looking for something. I want to be one of those wise men looking for Jesus. I don't want to be looking to destroy Jesus or, 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 or to be a part of what they were a part of. Then he wanted to know what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem to say, go and search diligently for the young child. Now he's got them doing it. And when he had found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. It's a lot. It's a lie, a lie, a lie. We see that he, was, he had false reverence. He, he was making that up, man. He didn't have nothing to do with God. Don't turn there. Isaiah 29, 13. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. Now listen to this. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. I want to understand that verse. The fear toward me is taught by the precept or the teaching of men. See, that's what the world's doing. They're telling us who God is. All these folks that don't want to believe in the Lord and they're against us now, well, God is this. God would never do that. God ain't that. The New York Times, I don't know if you saw that about that killing out in California. New York Times, liberal media, God isn't helping. Is that what it says? Something like that. God is not helping. Folks, that's sad. Yeah. Well, they, need, they need Jesus. But that doesn't make me want to give them up. That makes me want to stick with them. I'm not going with a hateful attitude. I'm not hateful to people. Matter of fact, I'm a lot nicer to folks out there to try to get them under the Word of God. But see, now the days, the age we live in, they're not even showing false reference. They're just saying, God's not doing nothing. He's not a God that would destroy anybody. He wouldn't let this happen. Man, he's just doing his own thing. Look at verse 13. And when they had departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring word. For Herod uh, will seek the young child to destroy him. See, he, he had false reverence, and now he's got foul intentions. He, he, wasn't, he was just—he was after him. He was lying. I'm going to worship him. No, you're not going to worship him. And God knew that. And God knows what the world's doing today. But I thank the Lord. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, folks. I get a little taken back by all this stuff that's going on. I think, man, what in the world? Mm -hmm. and, and really, I'm, I'm taken back mostly because of the three little ones in my wife. Because I'm pretty sure I can handle what's going to happen. It'd be fine. Man, they're just little kids. And, and they're going to have to they're going to have to grow. I mean, their Christianity is going to really tell. They're going to have to really, really buckle down to be Christians in their day and age. Because it's just moving away. But I hope to God, 
We put enough in them that they'll stand strong. We talked about that, man. I hope Dale just take a stand. I don't see nothing happen to him. I hope he takes a stand one day. And it wouldn't bother me if, it, if the world went corrupt and my kids all three. And, I, and I'm just telling you my heart now. And they all decided, you know, we're not going to say Jesus so we can live. As a parent, I'd say, well, I'm glad they're going to live. But I'm not. I'm going to come home with Jesus. Listen to me now. Herod had foul intentions. The world has foul intentions. The world has a false reference, man. They're after it. And he didn't want Jesus to live. But Jesus knew all about it. God knew all about it. God already prophesied he'd kill all those babies. God already knew it was going to happen. God already saw it happening. It was the plan of God to let it happen. Look at verse 16. Then Herod, when he saw that he was marked to the wise men, was exceeding wroth and sent forth and slew the children who were in Bethlehem and all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently acquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, Jeremiah, saying, In Ramah, was there a voice heard of lamentation and weeping and great mourning? Rachel weeping for her children and would not be comforted because they are not. You realize when they killed all those babies, all those mamas had to be there? Yep. And there was a cry going out there. This is real deal stuff. This ain't stuff that people hear about. This is something. And so Herod was after him. And he's just like society today, man. They try to eliminate God and so they can sin without having to give an account for it. Man, if, we, if I get rid of him, he won't be the king. If I can say I don't believe in him, I can do whatever I want. <clears throat> hey, listen. Let me tell you something about God. He wants us to have the truth. He wants Amen. us to live for him. It's not impossible to live for the Lord in this day and age. You have to take a stand. Mm -hmm. You just have to take a stand. And, and the sad thing is, the Christianity today... Folks just aren't willing to stand. They're, they want to cave in. They want to look like everybody, talk like everybody, smile like everybody, and act like everybody. And Jesus said, man, if you'll just stick with me, you'll be so stinking happy. It won't matter what you look like, sound like, or act like. You'll just be deliriously happy. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. They don't want to live for the Lord. They don't want to hear the wages of sin is death. They don't want to hear that. Herod caused a lot of havoc. He wanted his offspring killed John the Baptist. Uh, his offspring judged Jesus. And, uh, his offspring was eaten by worms in and, and the Bible. And in and Acts chapter number 12, man, Herod was a mean guy. Well, finally, we're done. The wise men found Christ. Amen. 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 Yep. Hey, if you're wise, you'll find him. Remember the verse? If you seek me, you shall find me. <laughs> And, and maybe that's what we need today. Some folks get on their knees and say, man, I want it. He died for you. Folks, you realize this. Dale and KK's generation does not know, do not know about the Lord. I mean, we have the opportunity when we get those bus kids to tell them who Jesus is. Amen. And the only reason any of them will know right now is because maybe they got a grandma that either knows them or thinks she knows them. And, and they don't know it. Just think, 20 years from now, if the Liberty Baptist Church wasn't here, 20 years from now, it would be gone. But since it is here, and since we're all going to run them buses, and since we're all going to fill this place up, since we're all going to build bigger buildings and more things and reach the city, and what a, what a great opportunity. You know? They get to find Jesus because we found Jesus. <coughs> hey, you understand that maybe this Christmas time when you're out at the store and you say, look, I, I'm thankful that you said happy holidays, but really I just want to tell you, Merry Christmas. Because it's all about Jesus. And maybe they'll say, and they have to say it nasty. You just say it, and then they'll say, that's right. And then you'll hear the people, well, nobody knows when he was born. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares when he was born? Well, you know, the Christmas trees are paganist. So... What? I like, matter of fact, I'm giving that thing away, putting a big old Christmas tree there for next Sunday. And you know what I like? Because Jesus hung on a tree. And amen. there was gifts under it when he died. He, his gift was himself to us. That's and right. He amen. had to hang some ornaments on it, which was himself. Hey, listen. The bigger thing about Jesus is, is, is Chris, the biggest thing about Christmas is Jesus. That's right. And the wise men, they found them. You know what their guide was? The star. 
You know what I'm going to apply that to? It's a good application. It, you know, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Psalm 119, 105. Psalm 119, 130. The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. Proverbs 6, 23. For the commandment is a lamp and a law, and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are in the way of life. We have a more sure word of prophecy, uh, whereunto you <laughs> will take heed as unto the light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rise in your heart. Hey, they had a star to guide them, and we've got this to guide us. Amen. They, listen, that, when I said that, you should have jumped up and sounded just like the stinking eagle scored a touchdown or something happened in your life, and we should have went psycho for that. Amen. This is a great book that changes lives, and God wants to lead us around, but you got it closed and you can't see nothing. You will get in this book. I don't understand it. You don't read it. There's no way you can tell me you don't understand it. You don't read it. Most people say, I don't remember, I don't read it. I don't understand it. Have never opened it up and try. Mm -hmm. Or they don't have a light turned on on the inside to understand it. Mm -hmm. Without the Holy Ghost, you cannot understand this book. That's right. If this book is born to you. You've never gotten the one thing out of it. Then you're probably not saved. Amen. But you get born again, start reading. Right. It ain't man, that is something. Amen. Come on. It did something for me today. I can put it down now. I can pray. I'm going to have a little bit of strength. And why does men find them? The star leads us, and the Bible leads us. And what's the result of them finding them? Look at verse 10. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Hey, joy! Hey, Amen. joy comes from God. Joy is a result of the Holy Spirit living inside of us. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit, the Bible says. Amen. Joy comes inside of us when we get saved. Verse number 11, when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, fell down and worshipped him. That's the result. You'll get joy when you follow the star of the Word of God. You'll get joy when you go to church and listen to God talk to you. You'll get joy when God moves inside of you. And then you want to worship Him. What's worship, Brother Burton? It's just reverence and thinking about who He is. Man, I can't believe you came and got me. Amen. I don't know how many times I've thought, I mean, I used to think this, Ito, I'm not even sure it's possible to come and got me. I, mean, I don't even know if it's even possible. But thank God, Holy Spirit lives inside of me. He's saying, no, oh, Burton, it's possible. Yeah. I did it, I did it, I did it. Right. Hey, listen, that's the result of, of seeking Him. That's why I want to be a wise man. That's why I want to be one of the wise men. And then verse number, uh, verse number 11, they worshipped Him, and when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto Him gifts, gold, frankincense, and murder. Hey, when you when you get the Lord, when you seek the Lord, and you find Him, you get joy, you worship Him, and then you just give your life to Him. Whatever is yours becomes His. So I knew you was going to say that. I've not heard at all that you knew that. I want to teach you how God wants you to live your life. Mm -hmm. And maybe today you're holding back yourself. I'm not talking just money. I'm talking about your talents and your treasure and who you are. Hey, God wants you to, to give yourself, your time, everything. He said they seek them from afar off. What do you really have to do tonight or on any Sunday, normal Sunday night that's so more important than hearing the Word of God? What do you have to do on Thursday night that's so much more important than the Word of God? What do you have to do on Saturdays that is so much more important than telling somebody about Jesus? What do you have to buy that's so much more important than what God wants with your life? Hey, I want to be a wise man. But Burton, are you a wise man? Sometimes. But just being honest, man, I know who I am. I don't have to convince anybody, convince myself who I am. I know. I'm not one of those big time preachers that come get up here and act like I got it all together. Man, I'm keeping it together every day and I'm, I, I needed to put it together this morning. It unraveled this morning, Brother Paul, and I had to step back and say, uh-uh, I'm not going to let it happen. Lord help us. God help us. And he put
put it all right back together. We got a few little text messages from some of the brethren this morning that they cheered me up. And I said, man, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a good day. Hey, you got to fight the good fight. And that's called yourself. Hey, you got to seek the wise, seek God, be a wise man. Are there any people in this room that are wise men? <laughs> wise women. Proverbs 12, 5, The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. What did you just do, Brother Bird? Gave me about 30, about 40 minutes of counsel. Come on. So, the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. I want to be a wise man. That ought to be our prayers for everybody in this room. If you don't know the Lord, you ought to, you ought to think about that right now. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Mr. King's going to come to the piano. Heads by and eyes closed. Let's all go to, go to prayer right now and think about the Lord. And uh, Maybe you're in here today and God spoke to your heart in some form or fashion. Maybe you were sitting here and you were thinking, you know, I, I want to be a wise man too. I, I want to get after him. I want to come from afar. I want to seek him. I, I want to give him myself. I want to worship him. I want to have joy. I want, I, I want to do... Hey, listen. If you know the Lord today... It's just a decision away. It's a prayer away. God is not standing far away from you, laughing at you, saying you can't get me. God wants you. He paid for you. He loves you. And so you ought to get to the altar. Maybe you're in here today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior. And, and listen, whoever just thought that in their heart, I'm not sure it's me, you ought to be honest. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'm not sure that Jesus is my Savior. Would you just pray for me? Here's my hand. Anybody like that, just slip it up right now. God bless you. I see that hand. Anybody else? Just be honest. Anybody else? Anybody else? God bless you. I see that hand. Good. Anybody else? Just be honest. Anybody at all? God bless you. Anybody else? Hey, if God spoke to your heart today, if you raised your hand you don't know that Jesus is your Savior, can I say this? I walked into a church with 150 people and didn't know one person in there. And I walked down that aisle and that preacher took the Bible, showed me what the Bible said, and I tasted and seen that the Lord was good. And he saved my soul that day. He wrote my name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's not a work salvation. It's a believe and, so, believe and know so salvation. If you raise your hand for salvation, you ought to step out in just a second. I'm going to pray, and Christians are going to come to this altar to pray. Some have already come. And you ought to step out at the same time, and I'll meet you, and I'll have a lady or a man talk to you about what the Bible says about salvation. And it'll be a great day to meet the Lord. A great Christmas present to Him, and a great Christmas present for yourself. He died for you. He loves you. Give Him what He paid for. Father, I pray that you bless this invitation. Lord, we love you today. And God, thank you for the good message. Thank you for the Word of God that preaches itself. Thank you, Lord, that we have the Spirit in here today. And, and folks are uh, just uh, overwhelmingly excited about what the Word of God does. And the music was wonderful. The fellowship, Lord, no bad spirits are to my knowledge. And God, I just thank you for that, Lord. Please bless this invitation. Help the ones who raised their hand for salvation to step out. And then, Lord, help the ones who raised their hand that you spoke to their hearts. And everybody should have been spoke to. Help us all to get to you and ask to be a wise man. Father, bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. God spoke to you today. You ought to come down and do business with him at the altar. Uh, you can step right out. There's plenty of room. The front chairs here, everywhere. If God spoke to you about salvation and you don't know the Lord, can I pray for you? Would you come down and let us take a Bible and show you what the Word of God says? Honestly, folks, I kind of I kind of hope some of y'all are doing business with the Lord. A lot of y'all were talking and cackling and stuff while I was preaching. I don't understand that. How God can be in a room and you be out of the room. And you ought to get down and ask God to help you. You ought to get to the Lord. And, 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 and some of us are making decisions. Man, I don't make a, you ought to make a decision for the Lord that will last. You got to do business with God. And He desired to do business with you today. And that's why He brought you here. He said, I want to speak to your heart. I want you to make a decision for me. That's what preaching is about. Very few times in my life I've been in a church service where I didn't make a decision for the Lord. When I did, it was my fault. And I know you can make them in your seat too. I'm not saying you didn't make a decision. I'm just saying make sure you make one. Have a, have a peace that passes all understanding. If you don't know the Lord, come down or talk to one of us. If you raised your hand, man, we, we, we can talk to you off to the side or... 
The Lord wants to do something with you. God chose us for such a time as this. What a great day and age to live in. He said, I don't think it's all that great. But you're missing out. Because I think it's the perfect time to live for the Lord. <coughs> I, I think God has put me in the greatest place in the face of this earth to pastor a church. He said, you don't believe that. I absolutely, 100% with all my heart before God and, and, and everything, believe that. Because the grace of God touched me, man. I, I don't know a better place to knock doors, and I don't know a sweeter place to talk to people. And I'm from Arkansas, man. They're all saved down there, supposedly. But listen, God put us here to reach the world. We can't reach the world if we're not close to ourselves. We can't be a testimony if we don't make decisions for Him. He's a big God. He's a good God. He's a wonderful Savior. He's the, the love of my life. <coughs> You want me to love your life. And you want to give yourself to him this year, the present. Lord, I'm yours. You need to be saved. I'd love to talk to you after the service. I'll talk to you on the bus. I'll talk to you in Wendy's. I'll talk to you back here. Whatever. But God loves you. He died for you. It's, it's, it's a little nerve wracking. It's not being in a place like this with a bunch of people you don't know. I understand, I understand that. Nothing in here says you have to come down here right now and get saved. But I would say I wouldn't put it off. Because God died for you. Today's the day of salvation. God wants to do something. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Lord, we love you, God. And thank you for a great, great morning. Thank you for the word of God. And Lord, thank you for the, the passage of scripture, Lord, that never gets old. God, I don't know how long you'll have you upon this earth. But Lord, I pray that every year you just give us something new from the word of God. That we don't just follow the norm. Lord, that we just, something comes from that book, something comes from the pages and speaks to our heart, Lord. And God, I want to wish you a happy birthday. I want you to know that I love you and I want to be with you and, and I am very sorry for where I fail you and I'm thankful that you forgive me. I'm thankful, Lord, that you've done work here today in the hearts of your people, Lord, and what a blessing that is. Father, please bless the remainder of our day. Help these folks to raise their hand for salvation, Lord, to know that they're in a friendly place and we'd love to talk to them about who Jesus is and what he did. Father, I pray that you bless the remainder of our time. Give us safety today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's be seated for just a second.